from the College by the Lake, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Local, regional, national, and international guests discussing the issues and topics affecting the way you live are on Forum, the North Idaho College Public Forum, with your host and moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. We're most pleased today to have a discussion and even a performance of mainstream jazz. In order to carry out this uh, goal today, we're very pleased to welcome to our program three guests who are very talented in this field. And after we interview them for about 16 minutes, the last 12 minutes of today's program is going to be music by our guest uh, performing in uh, three different numbers. And I'm sure that our viewers will enjoy this uh, entertainment that we have for you today and the discussion. First of all, I welcome to the program Alex Padini, who is a well-known uh, guitarist in this area in the field of jazz. He has great credentials. He has been with, in the past, the Stan Keaton Band and, and played with Billie Holiday, also Mel Torme, Doris Day, and Edie Gourmet. Uh, Alex, you certainly have been with some of the greatest, and we are happy you're here with us today, and thank you for coming. And next to him is Jenny Jackson. She told me that she started her music at age five. Uh, she grew up on a ranch where she learned to play uh, and to sing, and she is a, a very fine vocalist. Uh, she worked in radio and, and worked in Chicago and came back to the Northwest where she's performed for many years. And Jenny, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you. And our third guest is Dick Cook, who is a, a, a bassist. He has, does string bass and started to understand in high school. It was a requirement at your high school in Cincinnati, Ohio. He has performed with the Cincinnati Civic Orchestra, the Gonzaga University Orchestra, and the North Idaho Orchestra. And Dick, it's a pleasure having you on the program. And I'm very pleased to have our two regular panelists to join in discussing jazz today. First of all, is Janelle Burke, an attorney in the state of Idaho. And next to her is Steve Schink, the Dean of College Relations and Development at North Idaho College. And Janelle, who has a degree in music and performs herself, will start our questioning today. Well, it's just a wonderful opportunity to have you with us today to ask some questions uh, about jazz and about mainstream jazz. But first, we need to acquaint our, our viewers, I think, a little bit with your backgrounds. Uh, let's start with Alex. Can you tell us just briefly uh, something about your background, your musical background? Well, I started, I think, um, not really started. I, I was about six and I saw a toy trombone, so I got it for Christmas. It wasn't a real one. And then I <clears throat> went along and finally I heard, um, when I grew a little older, I heard the Django Reinhardt playing with Stefan Grappelli. And um, I got an old guitar and I started playing it and I played fiddle also at the same time. And switched over to guitar and I've been at it ever since. So I hear you saying you're sort of self-taught. Yes. Uh, but you listen a lot. I listen a lot. And Jenny, what about you? What kind of formal training have you had? I had some formal training. I used to say we had a sheep ranch and, and uh, uh, would get to town once a week. So I would take lessons mm -hmm. and learn. And then I loved to listen to the Hot Club of France. And I wanted to play like that. So uh, I had four uh, the runt pigs, piglets. <laughs> and uh, with that money, then I got a guitar, sent out, got one in the catalog, and then began you know, I enjoyed it. My mother always played piano. We always had musical instruments. Everyone did in, in the country. You amuse yourself with it. That was your form of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Now, you told me before the show an interesting story about uh, as you went to Chicago and you, and you studied with, with uh, someone whose name we would probably all recognize, a member of the Strauss family. Yes, her name was Friedel Strauss. Actually, it was uh, after we uh, left Chicago and, and we're in Los Angeles. Uh, one of the last surviving members and a uh, terrifying man you know, shouting things like, in the mask, you know, en gile. Uh, he, was, he would switch from French to, to uh, uh, Austrian. And uh, I never said anything, but I practiced. And uh, my vocal range went from uh, just normal D to E flat above high C. Uh, just the man uh, helped me a great deal by placing my voice in all this, these registers so that in case of a cold or an altitude change, anything I could handle. And it's been just a life-saving experience through the years. Dick, what about you? Tell us something about your background. Well, as Tony mentioned, I wound up uh, playing the string bass because I, the music credit was required in order to graduate from high school, and uh, the uh, vocal teacher there 
stood in front of me one day and said, Cook, you'll never sing. <laughs> <laughs> and so I uh, went on to study her string bass with a former mem member of the uh, Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra and then uh, parlayed that into uh, playing my way through college. I knew that the string bass uh, provided a lot of my uh, income for that purpose and then of course it was the big band era at that time and I was very fortunate to play with a number of the, of the bigger name bands at that, at that time. Uh, it was interesting because the, when the school, when the band would be coming into town at uh, Miami University, this is Oxford, Ohio, to play a prom, uh, the Campus Owls that I was playing with uh, would be the intermission band. And uh, I was invited to join Ray Anthony's band and I went on to play with Billy May and Tony Pastor and a lot of them through those kinds of contacts and it has stayed with me and I just have en always enjoyed playing and of course working with the people who are sitting alongside of me here is a, is a very exciting experience. It's really been a lot of fun. Before we go to Steve, I, I just have a comment. Uh, all of you are multi-instrument, I take it, uh, unless, Dick, are you also multi-instrument? No, uh, you're bass. primarily a bass. But uh, but the other two of you are multi-instrument. You, you, over the years, you've kind of switched back and forth between so, some instruments, uh, but you've located a major one, a major interest. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Major instrument is the guitar. And, and Once in a while, I get the fiddle out like Sherlock Holmes and. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Steve. Well, Janelle kind of took you through your musical past, and I'd like to bring things up to the present if I could. Would each of you, um, Alex, starting with you, uh, uh, tell the audience a little bit about what you're doing now musically, either individually or collectively? Well, we're we're working with the trio here, and um, I work with other groups also at Hobart's and. Uh, I do a. Now you're uh, going to have to help. A lot of people are not from this area. That's that's a club in Spokane, that's Washington. That's a club that in right? Spokane, and then I do uh, quite a few uh, duets with with bass players at Weinstein's, and uh, which is in Spokane, and uh, jazz festivals uh, like Kalispell last year. Kalispell, and, Montana. And uh, I go up there every year, so. Uh, that's primarily what I'm doing besides cooking. <laughs> See. Jenny, how about you? Well, I worked as a single for quite uh, a number of years, and then uh, uh, usually uh, would, would do uh, places like the Press Club in Spokane and, mm -hmm. and the Rockford Bay, who had a partner. I think, believe you worked with Charlotte Carruthers mm -hmm. and me out there one, yeah. one summer. Rockford Bay on Lake Coeur d'Alene, yes, near, mm -hmm. near Coeur d'Alene, I don't And then I worked uh, 13 seasons at Studio K, which is on the South Hill in Spokane. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the last uh, work, major work I did was at the Chef Restaurant in Spokane, five and a half years there. I see. And then people would come in and sit in. And l there was a lot of jazz happening because people were free to uh, express themselves. We're going we're to yeah. get to that topic of, of what's going on with jazz in just a minute. But Dick, before we get to that, if you'd tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Well, I, I exist in North Idaho primarily as a publisher, but it, I find that uh, the music provides an escape from the pressures of, our, of the everyday world mm -hmm. and uh, you, whether it's uh, symphonic work or whether it's playing jazz and trying to keep up with these two, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a very, very relaxing part of my life and it's been, I can't believe it, some 50 odd years. <laughs> it just stays with you. Thanks. Um, let's talk a little bit about jazz now if we can and I'm just going to open that up uh, to anyone who wants to, to get in on the answer to this next question but tell me a little bit about what mainstream jazz is and how it compares or contrasts to other forms of jazz. Well you have what you call a swing band which is like Tommy Dorsey had and uh, Glenn Miller and so forth. That is called a dance band. Mainstream jazz is more like a uh, Oscar Peterson, if I don't know if anybody's heard of Oscar Peterson, piano player with uh, uh, Joe Pass and with also uh, Ray uh, Brown. They had a trio, and uh, it's more or less a uh, cool type of jazz playing. It's not way out. It's mainstream. It has mel some melody to it, and then improvisation, but not way out. We, we talked before the show about uh, fusion jazz. Tell me a little yeah. bit about that and, and 
and how it relates to mainstream jazz. Fusion has a uh, different beat to it. Um, it also has the synthesizers, the uh, electronic uh, uh, gizmos, gadgets, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them. And um, also some of, some of the fusion uh, jazz has a Latin beat also to it. So that's a little different than stra mainstream jazz. Well, and that, that, that kind of leads me to a final question, and, and that is, um, let's talk a little bit about the health of jazz as, as an art form today. Um, well, the, as um, Alex has said, there's so much electronic equipment. And also with families, um, they don't, the, the wives uh, and, and the babies uh, would be left alone if it was the traditional way of the person using music as, as the primary source of income. Mm -hmm. There has to be uh, income and constant income. Therefore, the music business is, is relegated to, uh, well, say like golf, you do it when you can. I'm going to have to interrupt because <laughs> I got the signal that we have only about one minute before going to the music. Cool. And I think our viewers would like for you to tell us what you're going to do. Uh, Dick, you want to tell us what well, numbers? Or, or Alex, tell us what we're going to do in a minute here. We have three numbers that you're, we're going okay, to. OK, your first number is going to be uh, a Billy Holiday number. Uh, I got it bad, and that isn't good. That's the name of the number. Okay. And it was written, I believe, by Duke Ellington. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. What's the second number going to be? The second number is another Duke Ellington number called Satin Doll. Okay. And the third number? Jenny can give you that one. Yes, that's uh, Mildred Bailey, who is a, a native of Washington State, the Palouse country, um, and worked. Uh, her brother was part of, of the Bing Crosby Rhythm Boys things. They were all friends and co-workers. She was called the Rockin' Chair Lady. And this, this, that song is called Old Rockin' Chair. Now, as we do these three numbers, we're all involved with this very short interview we had of mainstream jazz, all of this is. And so I wish we had time to talk a little bit about how uh, you, p you believe that jazz is being polluted with uh, rock and uh, so forth. And, and, and I know, Alex, you said before the fusion. show that you, the fusion, <laughs> that it was, uh, was really damaging from your viewpoint. But, I'm so happy to report to our uh, viewers that you're now going to hear these wonderful numbers by our guest today on Mainstream Jazz. Thank you. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found that as entertaining and enjoyable as we did. Uh, our three guests certainly have illustrated with those numbers their great talent uh, in jazz. And uh, again, thank you for doing that. We have a little time left, and I'll ask Janelle to continue the questioning. It's interesting because I'm sure uh, two of you at least have a favorite instrument there. Uh, Dick, uh, let's start with you. You uh, prefer the stand-up string bass, I take it? Yes, I, uh, I played electric bass for a number of years. Uh, it was almost compulsory because it was a new thing. But when it came back to really using the bass for what it's intended, which is a percussion in instrument by the uh, acoustical bass, uh, is my favorite instrument. Question. And Alex, uh, what about the guitar you were playing today? Uh, that particular guitar? Yes. That's an Ibanez. Um, that's almost like a George Benson. Um, that's a nice guitar. And uh, I prefer a guitar over any instrument. I mean, as far as I... That's your first love, That's is the my, guitar. Yes. Uh -huh. And Jenny, what about the guitar you were playing today? It's a 1957 Gritch. Um, Chet Atkins model and Dwayne Eddy uh, in the early rock of the 50s uh, made that type of guitar. I like it because of the vibrato arm uh, makes it usable for not only uh, uh, ballads but um, Hawaiian music and all kinds of things like that. It's fun. It's, a, it's easy to play and for me it fits me and so I enjoy it. Now, uh, Alex, you said you have some people that you admire in your field, the masters yes. in, in the field. Uh, who are they? Well, Share the, with them with our viewers. One of the masters was Django Reinhardt, who uh, befell an accident uh, in a fire and burned his hand and only could use these two fingers. But if you heard him play, you think he had 20 fingers. And Joe Pass was the second one that I really care about. Jenny, how about you? I mean, singers? Yes. Uh, well, of course, Ella, primarily, always. Uh, and of course, nowadays, Rosemary Clooney. And I thought Linda Ronstadt did a fine job uh, of the big band things that she did. Very remarkable. Um, so far as new singers, I don't really know. Um, the, but the, Ella, mainly, is, is the one. Those that, are the people you admire? Yes, the most. On that note, I have to bring the program to conclusion. I have the signal we're out of time. On behalf of our panel and our staff, we thank all three of you for being with us today. And uh, it seems to me that jazz is such a soothing type music and gives one a chance to reflect on life. And I hope and believe our viewers have enjoyed as much as we have. Ladies and gentlemen, I would invite you to be with us again next week at the same time when we will discuss yet another subject. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. The North Idaho College Public Forum was videotaped live from the studios of instructional technology on the campus of North Idaho College for viewing at this more appropriate time. We invite you to join us again next week for another all-new edition of the North Idaho College Public Forum on this public television station.